Hey guys, this is Lee Small, and you're watching CMS TV. It's James Rivera right here on your classic metal show doing a hard rock metal cover <laughs> yeah. of uh, Tears for Fears uh, classic. Uh, everybody cool. wants to rule the world. And um, in the studio. Oh, never mind. No, he is. He's here. Oh, is he, oh, is he here? He just showed up. So all right. Let me click. Oh, there he I is. Right behind you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother. Are you, are, you driving, are, you? are you driving, James? No, I, I mean, the, uh, I got a gig tonight, and the uh, owners of the club, they gave me permission to use the office for sure. But the problem is, is the office is right by the stage. So okay. we would hear that band playing constantly, and this is live. So I'm just sitting in the car with the air conditioner on and, uh, <laughs> yeah, my coffin. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> Very good, well, James. What's well, James, there? how hot is it there? Just let's let's get the weather out of the way. Is it is it blasting there? Well, I mean, I mean, Fort Worth. I'm in Fort Worth today. The uh, temperature was actually at 115, uh, which means the index was 120. Uh, but check this out, because uh, Fort Worth and Dallas is a little drier than our asshole of America, Houston humidity. That I don't know why God created that. Like, there's things that I always want to ask him. Like mosquitoes, roaches, humidity. What were you thinking, God? Really? really? You know <laughs> what I mean? Now you know why I become the undead. You fucked me over. Gave me bad <laughs> hair day all my life. You know, yeah. So, and, and you know, so anyways, um, uh, in, in Houston, it's only 103 degrees, but the index is even higher than here because of the humidity. So yeah, that's just, how hot it is. Just holds that heat in. Yes, yes, and it's just it's it just it's so it's unbearable, and you know, and I, I like sometimes when people say, "Oh, I can't wait for summer," I just want to bite the hell out of them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to see summer, you know. Yeah, sorry, you know, and you won't be brought back from the dead. I give you the bite of death for saying that, you know. <laughs> so what? But uh... On the other hand, I I can understand how you guys live up there in Cleveland, and yeah, you know, eight months of winter might get old, but. Let me let me tell you something, man. You can put on as many clothes as you need to to keep warm. But here down here, you could be completely naked and just be wearing sandals and try to get away with, hey, I'm celebrating John Lennon's birthday. And you're still going to be sweating like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> so so what what gig are you doing tonight there, James? Who, well, what, what? I, uh, we're doing this. uh this uh it's called Dimebag's birthday bash today's his birthday so um and pantera just played here in fort worth yesterday and um i'm actually singing for a black sabbath tribute called super okay. and we kind of do like all eras everything not just ozzy and dio but tony martin everything uh, ian gillen and these guys they had a singer but he had to leave for work and he was a really good singer and of course, you know, what, what do people do Then when you're in Houston? Like, let's call the king. You know, maybe he'll come out. And, and you know, for me to sing Black Sabbath, it, it, you know, I, think I can do it backwards. So it's right. not a, it's not, it's a no brainer. And I said, you know what, man, I'd, I'd love to do that. So it kind of keeps me busy on the weekends. Very good. Well, James, let's get into the new record here. Got to admit, probably like everybody else that knows you, was not ready for what we got with James Rivera's Metal Wave. Very different, very, very different for you. Why don't we start there, man? I'm going to ask the obvious question. Why? What was it that you were trying to say or that you felt you hadn't done in your, you know, in your career to this point? You know what it was, was the fact that it was during the pandemic, I was bored. And, okay. uh, and oddly enough, I'm singing for this Black Sabbath tribute and I, I've stayed away from my metal tributes for a long time. Uh, I mean, you guys have known me for years, and you know I had the international worldwide Sabbath due to Sabbath. But right. what happened, it, what started happening in Houston is like tribute man started becoming like lice on the kid's head at school. They just became too many of them. And so every time I turned around, 
I thought about booking my Sabbath Judas Sabbath. Oh, that Dio tribute's playing the night before. Oh, and that other Judas Priest tribute is playing next weekend. So I just kind of started stepping away from the metal tributes. And I guess I was bored and, and I thought, well, what can I do that's different? I mean, I like to do uh, covers. I like to have fun with it. And I had to, uh, you know, I had to be honest with my inner self. And my passion has always been new wave, dark wave, goth music. You know, and I think a lot of people that know me very close have known that for years. Like Depeche Mode is my, is like Iron Maiden to me, but in that world. So well, I love it. They're, they're, they're 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 and the Cure they're, they're and Bob House people. and so on and so on. So I started thinking, you know, I've never heard anybody take these songs and do a metal. And so I called Larry and Larry said, Dude, I'm on it. And the next thing you know, man, he composed Black Celebration. And uh, he recorded it. And he says, come on over and, and see what you can do with the vocals. And then that's how it started. Then he did Love My Way. And then he did the Cure song. And then he did the Sisters of Mercy. So now we have four songs completely demoed. You know, it was all a drum machine. He did all the bass. He did everything. And I did all the vocals. And Massacre got wind of it and said, what is this project you're doing? And we said, oh, it's just for the well, world. Well, what is it? And I said, well, it's we took new wave and we're doing it metal, you know, it's for our own entertainment. We're bored, you know, we're, we're, drink, we're drinking ourselves to death, you know, can't go anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> so you know, and so uh, he told me a story about a band called Atrocity, you know, one of the earlier German thrash bands. They did a project called 80s Works and they did the same thing, but their versions were more like nine inch nails, almost kind of already leading into what Rammstein became anyways. It wasn't like power metal or doom right. metal or the way we did it. And he told me that it was it, the project became very, very successful. And I said, oh, and he offered a deal. And we said, okay, I guess we've got to put a band together now. And that's what right. happened. And we started uh, com recomposing all the songs. And then we ended up with 10 songs and the album was done. Very good. So, so how did the songs themselves get chosen? Were they just songs that you know, are your favorite songs or did you have some kind of uh, I think I can do something with that in your brain or how did you pick them? It was, it was a combination of both. For, for example, Black Celebration was definitely a, a favorite. Uh, I mean, Love My Way has always been a favorite. The Cure song, I was like, oh, that's got to be done. Bella Lugosi, come on, my great uncle, I got to do a song in honor of him. You know, so, you know, they, they were songs that were already kind of... Um, Larry kind of threw a curveball when he came up with Shock the Monkey. And, right. you know, I, I said, okay, you know, I wasn't going to argue with it. It was never really considered new way, but it was from that time era. And it, he did such a great job on it that I'm like, sure, why not? And uh, then Maurice, the other guitar player, um, he's the one that came up with the Echo and the B-Men. And I said, oh, yeah, that, that would be a good one. But, of course, we had to be very sele selective because as – you know, I my right hand man and Larry and of course Maurice. Uh, if the, if the songs were ready in a harmonic minor scale, then it was easy to reproduce them. If they were in a major scale, like a lot of the songs we had chosen didn't make it. Um, okay. And you know, because only one song from the fix is going to make it on the next record. You see, and and so it it's kind of one of those things where they're favorites, but they're also songs that we feel that they have to work to become metal and sound natural. Now, where, where is your audience for this kind of a thing? I mean, obviously there, you know, uh, shows like ours, will will we'll throw one in there every now and again, but where, where is your audience for this to, you know, make it worth your while to take the time to rearrange and record all these things? And well, a lot of it, believe it or not, we thought, you know, we didn't really know where the audience was going to be. What we thought, you know, well, what I thought once the record was going to come out, I go, well, you know, how are we going to explain this? And the one, the positive spin that I put on it was that, well, you know, nowadays people from our generation, and I don't want to use the word old, <laughs> fuck that, that's no, that's not old. We're just, we came from a generation of good, the last of the good music, okay? Right. And I, and I find that nowadays, you know, 80s new waivers that didn't, like metal they love metal wave now because they remember the songs and we did them to the point where they can't still sing along with them with the exact melody that was the one thing we were very careful about was not to ruin the exact melody and 
the metalheads that cared about that stuff and made fun of people that had a flock of seagull haircut and wanted to beat them up, you know, at, behind the shack after school. You know, now they're like, man, I never cared for those bands. But the way you do it, do this battle. Right. So we're kind of bringing in two worlds now. Right on. But what's funny is I find that and there goes james <laughs> lost him well let's see if he those, comes back in real quick those, are those damn phone signals yeah uh, it's probably cooking <laughs> yeah, his phone is probably getting hot his, his phone's probably too hot and <laughs> short circuited on him but I got the ac running and i got my foot on the accelerator <laughs> Yeah, it's an interesting project, to say the least. I don't know. Did you get a chance to listen all the way I through didn't. it? I, I did not listen to it, so I, I kind of wanted to get the first, you know, the first surprise sure. on the show. So, uh, you know, but, uh, it, you know, just from what I heard from the Tears for Fears cover there, that was kind of a different take. Yeah, it's definitely a very different take. Here, James is back. There he is. Don't know what happened, sir, but. <laughs> you guys. Are you there? Oh. There. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. We're here. But you're not. About, Sounds. In the, anyway, so it, yeah. Man, I've, we've been getting, I've been getting love from countries that, that Hellstar, Seven Witches, or anything I've never ever done has never gotten attention from. China. You wow. know, Thailand. And I'm just going like, okay, what? Well, well, and they're loving the metal wave thing. And I, that is very odd to me. You know? Oh, so I'm kind of going like, wow, this is, yeah, in Taiwan, I'm, oh my God, this is crazy, you know, <laughs> you know, so it's hit or miss, you know, it just depends on people's choice of things. Right. Do you think, do you think now that you're seeing that it's getting some love, do you think that you'll get out there and play shows with this or, or do you got to wait and see how that, how that shakes out? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we've been doing shows. And, and oh, they're, okay. uh, they're getting bigger and bigger all the time. The, the word spreading, like, oh, you got to go see Metal Wave. You know, James, Hellstar, Seven Witches, you know, ah, that guy. Yeah, you got to go here and <laughs> sing this other stuff. And, and it's New Wave, but it's metal. And people are like, really? Wow, that sounds interesting. You know, it's kind of like, you remember that old commercial Reese's Peanut Butter Cup? Yeah, you got peanut butter in my chocolate. No, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. It's kind of right. one of those things like, wow, you get the best of both worlds kind of. If you loved both genres of music when you were growing up, so how can you go wrong? You well, know, that's, that's and you'll find out you find out more metalheads coming out of the closet and going, dude, I, I actually went to go see Flock of Seagulls and I really enjoyed that show. <laughs> I go, <laughs> but I had to hide, you know. <laughs> so I, I know I get it. <laughs> too good. So, man, what's going on with Hellstar be, beyond this? I know this is the current project, but I'm, I know you. You're always working on something with Hellstar. Where are you at with that? Oh, no, dude. I, we got we to gotta, we gotta mix it in. Of course. I mean, that's my baby. Come on, you right. know. Well, uh, we're writing. And Larry just sent me uh, some mixes of some of the stuff that we already did. And I, I listened to it at the hotel. And I was like, we were worried about. You know how we are. We're always worried about how are we going to top that album now? How are we going to top that album now? You know, and Vampiro, well, actually, you know, the Clad in Black was, it still had, you know, and Black Wings of Solitude, that's material, you know, or their recent material. And then when we started writing this one, we're like, man, it, for a while, we didn't think we were done. We just knew that we were, were like, oh, man, we, we just couldn't find you know the right chemistry yet i i couldn't rhyme you and blue for a while you know so i'm going like man i don't even know what to write so we, we just cut that back and said look it comes to us in time and now we're we're in the studio uh i laid down the tracks to two songs and i can tell you this right now it's gonna blow away anything we've ever done and i you wow. know and and i, I never I always think I, am i gonna be able to say that to people and feel confident or am I going to just say it make them feel better? Or you know, no, I'm saying it because as a fan, if I step outside the band, this last, this latest song that we did, I'm going like, wow, this dude, 
Yeah, I know. You know like, let's, get, let's get working. Let's keep moving, man. Let's put the best house or album out again. <laughs> well, James, It'll be worth you... waiting on, but you know what? When it comes out, I think people's people's faces are going to come out. Well, James, when you say you're in the studio, I know you and I had talked about budgets and, you know, recording budgets and where you can do all your recording. Where do you do your recording? Is this something you guys put together yourself or is this an actual place that you actually go like an actual? Yeah, big we, we do everything at Larry's house. He's got the home studio. Yeah. Okay. No, we do it all at Larry's house. You know, it, uh, the vocals, everything. He's got the home studio there. He's got everything we need, just like going to a big studio. Well, with budgets being what they are, it, it definitely helps to have somebody who has all the gear already all set up and you can knock that out and stay within, uh, you know, stay within your budget. Now, yeah, uh, was- are you getting any financing for this? Or are you still fi- self-financing all your own stuff? Oh yeah, no, no, no. I mean, we're we're one of the few bands still getting somewhat of a small budget. You know, a lot of bands aren't getting anything. It ain't like what it used to be, but hey, we're getting something, and what we're getting is not bad. So, I mean, I'll leave it at that. And okay. I think that we're one of those bands that deserve it. Hell you know, yeah. the double edged thing about having the convenience of in Larry's studio and not being on a time frame is that it can have if you start getting lazy or or some problems come up, you can always come up with an excuse that day. Things can take longer. But the beauty of it is you can go back and fix things over and over again until you, you're happy with it. Right on. Definitely. Well, dude, people should definitely be happy with the new release, uh, James Rivera's Metal Wave, uh, New Wave Gone Metal. Uh, it is available in all the um, all the places now, but uh, we definitely recommend that people buy it, not just stream it. Uh, where should we tell people to go to uh, to get it and get merch and keep up with you and all that stuff, James? Well, I, I would say, man, you know what? Go to if you have a local record store that's you know that's still distributing real metal, they would have it. I go there and get it from an actual record store, the old days. If you have to get it online, well, you know, Amazon or wherever, you know, you buy your music and, uh, you know, or order it from Massacre themselves or what have you, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. to us, it's all game streaming is fine, too. I mean, but um, I think a lot of people, especially us uh, 80s people, we'd like to have a physical record and right. a physical CD to hold, you know, and look at and read and, you know, and that kind of thing. Right on. Well, one more time, it is James Rivera's Metal Wave, New Wave Gone Metal. James, I know you have a gig to get to, so go kill them tonight. Make, you know, rip their faces off, as they say. And um, and thanks for checking in with us here on the show, bro. Hey, dude, you know what? I love you guys for being around and supporting me all these years. I will be around for another century because I bit both of you. You weren't looking. (laughs) Tomorrow, all that gray is going to be gone. (laughs) <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, James, we'll uh, we'll let you pick yeah. a song off of this. And you know what? Uh, you, you know what? And, and when you go and, and... what's that? <laughs> we'll let you pick a song from this to take us out of the interview. So, what should we play? From uh, New Waves Gone Metal. Yeah. yeah. I would say play Black Celebration because I'm having one tonight. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Guys, I love you. Take care, man. All right, bro. Take care, Take care buddy. All right, see you. Well, and then when Hellstar comes out, I'll see you guys then, right? Sounds good, Thanks, bro. Man. Okay. All right, bro. Hi, right. this is James Rivera, the king of hell, and you are listening to the Classic Metal Show. <laughs> Thank you.